days, all days. Been a road, been a road. Yeah. But I know one thing, you dropping a lot of jewels. I got to remember something. Good thing we record you, man. You, you dropping yeah. you drop jewels all over the place, man. It yeah. was serious, man. So you you doing your non-part work, you building, man. I, like I actually got a chance to see, because I'm kind of a little, a little biased when it comes to you, because I seen the beginning process, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it's funny, because even when I was speaking to some people before I came over, uh, actually a, a police officer and a war eight resident. I was like, man, I'm going to interview Trey. And like, you know, man, he don't. Right, we yet when this person got killed, I said, man, you know, if he told if he gave how many scenes he been on, that's why I actually heard about the therapy piece. I was like, there's no way in the world you've been and running on them my scenes. Job, man. I'm not a police officer yeah. or, or a firefighter. Right, you know, right, but I right. do it because I try to be there for the families and right. then try to make sure I make sure it don't escalate, try to provide supports. But I can't there's no way possible I can uh, right. respond to all crime scenes. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. I'll be there all day, be at a shooting today, matter of fact. So right. yeah, come on, man. Yeah, that's what I say, but I'm like, I'm saying. Ain't, I ain't nobody, I don't know nobody in DC as active as me in right. politics. Right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, it's a catch 22, you know, right. you just gotta, it, praise and rejection are two sides of the same coin. You can't right. accept one without accepting the other. You right. know, when you become right. a leader, you're on the front line, you gotta take the good and the bad. Right. So I just take it on the chin. Right, man. So speaking, uh, speaking of that, what what prompts you? Well, obviously for your journey, but what what made you make the decision that I'm gonna run for councilman? Oh man! So I was on the school board before I was a councilman. Right. Okay. So it was a uh, one of my former mentors. People know that I was mentored by Marion Burry, right, yeah. but a lot of people may not know I was mentored by William Lockridge. Okay. William Lockridge was one of the first people that got me involved in politics, and he was on the school board. Okay. And he he okay. was a strong advocate for civic empowerment and getting mm -hmm. people from the community engaged civically in their own community. Mm -hmm. And um, one day I was at a, at a game, that's when Oak Hill was Oak Hill. Mm -hmm. And I had some kids in Oak Hill playing football. I went to the championship, yeah, they yeah. played uptown. And he walked up to me and he put his hands over my eyes when I was at the game. I turned back, you know, I don't play, right, I, I'm right. small. So don't, don't get right. up on me, don't touch right, me, right, I don't play right, like that, right, you know? Right, right. You know, respect my space. Right, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I'm turning around real aggressive. I'm like, mm -hmm. man, hold. Right. He like, I, I'm, I see him. But it's like, you it ain't registered. Yeah, I know, yeah, I know who he is. Right. I'm like, do he know who I am? Because I, right. I, I know Mr. Lockridge. Right. And he helped my little brother graduate. My little brother was in jeopardy and not graduating. Mm -hmm. And little brother and his friends. And he was like, man, he had a dream. He said, I had a dream about you. I'm like, yeah, a dream. I'm like, ho, man, what's going on? <laughs> it's like a dream. I'm like, yeah, a dream about you. Right, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. what? <laughs> So he's like, man, I need to talk to you. But it's a football game going right, on. You have right, a, a right. real live moment. Mm -hmm. And little did I know, as I built with him for like a year and a half after that, mm -hmm. that we went to a meeting. That's when Sekou Biddle was going against Vincent Orange. Mm -hmm. And they was trying to get the seat for uh, the council member seat mm -hmm. when Kwame was gone. And he told me to meet him down there. And I met him down there. And we talked to him. He told me to call him the next day. But he always say call him, but he don't be answering. He had a right. Blackberry. Don't right. never answer his right, phone. Right. I called him, he answered. I talked to him for like an hour and a half, Kurt. And he was telling me he wanted to be running for a school board seat. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, I don't do politics. I'm like an activist, right. man. I, right. Politics, man, that ain't really my thing. You right. know what I'm saying? I'm right. also a street fighter. I'm from yeah. the trenches. And I didn't tell him, yeah, but I didn't tell him no. But I was like, ah, that ain't really my thing. Mm -hmm. I fell asleep. I got a call from Nate Ben and Fleming. And a lot of people was calling me. And I got a phone call that when I woke up that he went into a coma that night. Mm. And he never made it out, he passed. And I was right. like, damn, I was my whole world was shit. Cause he was like a father to me. It's, it's like I knew him for like a little bit. I felt like I knew him for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And I guess about two to three weeks later, his wife, Wanda Locker, said she was sitting on the couch next to him when he asked me to run for his seat when he retired. And so his seat was about to be up because it was a special election. He asked me would I run in his honor. Mm -hmm. I was like, how can I say no? You know what I'm saying? I said, I figure I'll run. I probably won't win. Right. And I put a little team together. We ran, we won. Like from the, straight out the mud, the no political experience, no man. I remember they were saying we was thugs. People had on do rag. It was just, they were saying people was going to post smelling like weed. It was a lot of ridicule. Right. But man, what, what what God got for you gonna be for you. Right. You know what I'm saying? You just gotta stay stay in that mode. And I've been in that vein for quite some time. I, that's what would get me started in politics. To answer right. your question, right. and then a council member eventually, you know, right. connected with Marion Bird. And, and, and the first time you ran for council member, you lost. Yep. How that feel? It was devastating, man. Oh, it was yeah. devastating. It's one of the worst feelings I I can feel. But one, one, one thing about me, I don't give up. Right. I learned a long time ago, you can't conquer anything you're not committed to. Right. And I felt like they cheated me. Right. Right. Because mm -hmm. I feel like we had more votes than all of them. But they said we had, you know, if it's within one percent by the law, they got to do a recount. Right. They said that was like at one point three percent, so they right. couldn't do a recount. But I had to pay for a recount. Right. And I asked them how much I had to pay. 
They said seventeen thousand, Kirk. I ain't, I raised less less than seventeen thousand the whole campaign. Right, yeah, right, yeah. Man, yeah. no way possible. Right, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. So I like they 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 work me. Right, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. I never forget, man. Yeah. You came, you had a bag of green hats. Probably about three hundred. Oh yeah, you just had one. Yeah, about three hundred green hats or two. You was like, man, I'm trying to get some of my brody on there, but he say, he say, man, I'm getting, I'm getting some funding right yeah. now. We just run the George. We just ran the George, right? Trey yeah. Hunt, you had, you had a whole set of that. The man race say, that's a lot of information man, down there. Hey, Trey all white, set of that, red and blue, right? Yeah, all the break, man. man so I, see I you appreciate see. that. You did them. Did, 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 I think you did some more hats for me. You just like Trey. Yeah. I still got to get paid for my hats. Man. <laughs> Right, yeah, yeah, man. I was the thing. I was like, hot kicks. Yeah, yeah, man. Every I went, man. Well, look, yeah. Your dedication, man, yeah. is, uh, is unwaving, man. And, and I'm just, and just hearing your journey, man, from your grandmother uh, to the guy that, you know, passed away, Lockridge. Um, it show you, it's, like I tell people, you if you watch a person foundation, mm -hmm. you pretty much can, can pinpoint them, right? So your, your dedication and perse perseverance it's crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. And it's show all the way to where you at now, right? Yeah. But I just want to highlight that because I'm thinking that in my head. But you end up running again and you beat the people. Mm -hmm. How you feeling in victory? Oh, man. <laughs> it's almost you want to show off, but you can't. You got to right, stay right, humble. Right, you know? right, 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 right. Uh, but I think that God, like it worked because when Murray Bray passed, his son was in the race, Chris Bray. Right. And no, Chris Bray, real name was Murray and Bray. So a lot of people felt like they wanted to support me, but they wanted to support his son. His right. father just passed, you know, right. and, uh, and and it was crazy because one day I woke up and Chris Burry was on the news talking about he endorsed Trey. It wasn't even no election going on. He said he endorsed me for council member. There was no election going on. We both had lost that race. We had to wait till the 18 months of new race and he endorsed me. And I was like, "This is why? What's Chris doing?" But right. that's how he was. Right. Little did I know that Chris was going. Chris died before the election. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so it's certain things that happened divinely. I couldn't ask for even plan. And so when that happened, uh, a lot of people supported me because they felt like they, they cheated the real people in D.C. Because right. the person I ran against raised in, in two elections raised five hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. I think total we ended up raising in both races like sixty thousand mm dollars. -hmm. So it was like the money machine versus the people. Right. And so we played on that narrative, like right. we can't be bought. Like it's right. war they for sale. Where, right. where, where y'all going? Where y'all at? Right. So right. it was that type of thing we ran, and people knew I had a genuine heart, you know, right. for God's people. Because like you said, the work I've been doing prior to anybody knowing me mm -hmm. for a long time I wasn't on a major platform. I was just working in the trenches for right. at least ten years prior to. Right. So yeah. Right. So they gave you the keys to go open the door to the councilman office. Yeah. You, you left the school board. When you got there, you ain't really know about the school board. You just went on. Divine. Absolutely nothing. When you got in there for the councilman, did you know anything about that? Yeah, I kind of did because I used to spend time with Burry down the city okay. hall. You okay. know, I got even got pictures. I'm on the dais behind Burry sitting in the chair. Mm -hmm. I should be down there. Um, but even even when you get in the seat, it's still different because you the guy now. Right. Right. So everybody, right. everyone calling you, pulling on you, asking you. And when, and it's a, it's a double edged sword because if, it, if their life don't change instantly, then it's like, damn, you was the hope. What happened? And it's like, we didn't get here. Overnight, so it's not going to change overnight. Mm -hmm. um, but it's about really me galvanizing people and making them be a, being a part of their own story and success. That mm -hmm. one person not going to change the dynamics of our community that's been devastated, neglected for over 30 years. It's about us right. collectively fighting for power mm -hmm. and influence and equity in this budget mm -hmm. together. And so that's the type of campaigns I run, that's the type of uh, meetings I have, that's the type of leadership I have, like inclusiveness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, man, and you, you doing the councilman thing, man, you over there. Everywhere you on you on marches on on marathons on crime scenes passing out food. Yeah, I even see a lot on, on outside of War Eight and War Five and War Seven to oh, yeah. events and stuff like yeah. that, right? So that's just like a camaraderie with other councilmen, or just you paying homage to the city. When I see your other events, what that be about? Well, people feel like I'm I'm, I'm the DC guy, okay. and then people be like, "Man, you always in something. You don't come up here." Right. But it's like, man, I'm the Ward Eight council member, and we got enough work to go around. Right. You know, we got enough work for three council members in Ward Eight. Right. And so there are instances where I do cross the line and go to other wards because you know I feel like. Uh, people are calling me, and I don't want to just get normal if I can help them. You know right. what I'm saying? I don't want, you know, so I have to pick and choose because the the the, the load is heavy. Right. We have some of the highest health disparities, wealth disparities, income inequalities, uh, homicides. Uh, you name it, we got it. And so right. my plate is full. But sometimes, you know, people call me, and I I can't just say no, man, because right. it'd be on my heart. It'd be a burden to me. So I got to get up, get dressed, and go up there, man, right. and make something happen. So depending on where it is. 
And Reese in the last mayor race, you decided to run for mayor. What what prompted that decision? That was crazy. Um I wasn't even gonna run for mayor. Okay. What happened was I was always arguing with the administration about different things I feel like wasn't happening. Okay. Because for a long time, for like seven years, there was no money in the budget to deal with the violence and crime in the community sure. because the administration of mayor was saying that crime was down. Mm -hmm. It was like, man, I was doing three to four visuals and frontals a week. I'm mm -hmm. like, so in Ward 8, I mean, I remember Phil Pennell, uh said it, but we was like, yeah, crime is down, down the street, right. around the corner, right. in our schools, mm -hmm. uh, in our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And so we started changing, nar changing the narrative and I just said, I'm getting tired of arguing back and forth about what can be done for my city. Like, this is my city. Right. I'm really from here. Mm -hmm. I'm born in Greater Southeast Hospital, you know, mm -hmm. Dr. Charles Lloyd. You know, right, like, right. man, I'm really from here. And I just felt like, man, I can't. Get... So what happened was, Muriel Bowser announced she was running. Another councilman, Robert White, said he was running. Mm -hmm. So when he announced, it was online. And people, a lot of people didn't know Robert White. So mm -hmm. he was like, Robert White? What happened to Trayvon White? They was really right. saying, Trayvon White? What happened right. to Trayvon White? Right. So the com people was at me in the comments. Right. So I, so I commented, I said, man, what's up? They was like, man, you running? I said, let's go. I had to put some comment right, on it. Right, right. So, so then the next thing I know, they had ran a news story that I was running for me. I was just commenting on, a, on the right, Instagram. Right, right. So my mother called me. She's like, you ain't tell me you was running for me. I said, what? She said, it's on the news. I said, what? Right, right. So I was like, well, let's go. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> let's turn up. Hey, they fight you one. You ain't never ducked for a fight. I ain't no wreck. I promise you. <laughs> so that's, how, that's really how it started. So, right. you know, people got a little salty. Even Robert White, you know, we, he, we talked it through. He was a little salty. Right. He felt like I, I snubbed his chance or whatever. Right. But I'm like, man, this is my city, man. I can't expect nobody to do for me what I can do for myself, mm. you know? Mm. Um, and so I ran. You know, I was unsuccessful. But, right. you know, when you know me, I, I, I stay at it. Right. Stay, yeah, stay, stay at it, man. Right. Middle line, say, keep your hands up, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name? Let's just... Let's just uh, uh, Say you won the mayor. This what was the first thing on your list you would have done? The first thing you would have checked off on your list, one of your big I know you had a lot of things you would have done. What was the first thing you would have done? First thing I would have done is bring everybody back together, especially those who ran, you know. Right. Right. Uh because of, policies become divisive. Right. A divisive in a in a in a place where, you know, you people choosing teams and all that. And reality is we we can't get to a finish line unless we're together, man. Mm -hmm. We're strong. It's, it sounds cliche as we're actually strong at together. Mm -hmm. And it can be very contentious and divided. You know, people choosing sides because they got grants over here, or they got a contract over here, or that's their cousin, or that's I grew up with him or her. And so first thing all they do is try to have a kumbaya moment to bring everybody together and let them know I'm the leader. Right. But we all on the same team. We, right. we got to get to this goal together. Right. We can't get I can't get here by myself. Right. Um, so I always try to do that right. to try to bring everybody together. But then you know, crime, man. We we uh, crime out of, out of control in the city right now, man. We. We got the we we had the highest crime in the last two years. We had in the last twenty years. Mm. You know, you see what's going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that's one of the first things we tried to tackle. I, I actually on the council, people talk about going to crime scenes, but just re, the, and the reality is, I'm uh, myself along with Kim McDuffie uh, was the first people that fought to get money in the budget to address violence in D.C. Right. Prior to me, there was zero dollars in the budget to fight crime in D.C. Zero. Mm. It was no violence interrupters going on. It wasn't no cure the streets. It was nothing in place. Mm -hmm. And we tapped Carl Racine. He put some money in. Murray Bowser put some money in. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even no one's office in D.C. Right. And so we had to change the narrative and, you know, and really get some people on the ground because at first they were saying that we was paying ex-cons not to commit crime when we try to hire return of citizens. Right. Right. And so... Uh, we had to change that narrative, and you know, I've done a lot of other things. Like we built in the state, it was like we won't handle trauma center in Ward Eight. Right now, we built in the state of art, brand new hospital, yeah, okay. right smack in, in Southeast Washington, yeah. in Ward Eight on St. Elizabeth campus. You know, we built two grocery stores in Ward Eight. You know, they're struggling right now. Uh, we uh, put money in the budget to build four new recreation centers in Ward Eight. Right. One is already standing up right now, and two breaking breaking ground in the next couple of months. And so we've done some things in the ward. I said I was gonna do when I ran. You know, just not talking to talk. Or just active at crime scenes. Right. Nah, I got to do some more right. legislation. I uh, passed legislation that gave over 5,000 people their license back. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I did a ticket amnesty bill, which I'm going to have to do again because it's out of control right, with right, these right, tickets. Right, Lord right, have mercy. Right, right. But it's some of these non traditional things that I do that people don't know, you know, because mm -hmm. people don't pay attention to a lot of legislative pieces and stuff right. like that. But that's my job. Right. Out the park, niggas know me. Curb on, little homie. All days, all days. Yeah. Been a road, been a road. 
Thank you for watching Changing Jewels on Kirkbone TV. If you like the jewels that we are dropping, subscribe, hit the notification, and share with some friends. And I'll see you on the next episode of Changing Jewels, Kirkbone TV.